Harry's wife, 82.7. Why is she so blind? I've noticed in the comments that some people have asked, how is it that Harry's wife can't see the problems that she creates, the ridiculous behaviours that she engages in? Surely she must be able to see it. Well, no, because if you think about it, if she was able to see it, she wouldn't do it, would she? If you knew that you were making a tit of yourself, you'd invariably stop. If you suddenly had the realisation that what you were wearing made you look ridiculous, you would go and get changed. If you had the sudden realisation that the way that you were behaving made you look like a simpleton, you would alter your behaviour. The fact is that she continues to do what she does demonstrates that she can't see it. Now I know to many of you listening, this seems extraordinary that she's unable to see it. You can, why can't she? Well, that's the nature of the delusion. The delusion exists with the narcissist to protect the narcissist from the shortcomings in their behaviour so that they are encouraged, motivated and galvanised to get those all-important prime aims. If Harry's wife was allowed to see the hypocrisy that she engages in, there would be hesitation and she wouldn't assert the control. If she was allowed to see that she was engaging provocative and unpleasant behaviour that wasn't justified, there would be a hesitation. She might even stop, thus failing to get the fuel on which she is reliant for her to survive and to thrive. She, in effect, has to be duped by her own narcissism so that she feels a particular way and sees things in a particular way, thinks in a particular way, so that she's always motivated to unconsciously pursue control, fuel, character traits and residual benefits. She knows, for instance, that she is making an appearance and that she wants people to like her. She knows that she's signing up to a deal because she wants to earn the money. She knows that she's authorising a charitable donation to help people. And she'll recognise also that that will, of course, make her look good. But she doesn't know that the underlying reason behind these behaviours is all linked to the unconscious pursuit of the prime aims. She doesn't see that turning up to read her own book is grandiose. But the narcissism doesn't let her see it. The thought doesn't enter her head. If someone was to suggest to her, perhaps a, an astute advisor sidles up to her and says, Harry's wife, I don't think it'd be a good idea if you sit and read your own book. She doesn't go, oh, all right, good idea, thanks, I won't do it. The suggestion threatens a sense of control. And given her status as a mid-range narcissist, not a greater or ultra, who would be more open to such suggestions, indeed would be unlikely to make the error to begin with. But for her, she's always right. And somebody suggesting that, she would think, no, no, thanks for the suggestion, but I think these children will really enjoy it. Because she's deluded as to what she thinks children enjoy demonstrated by the fact that she wrote this book in the first place thinking that children would engage with it when as i've explained repeatedly on previous occasions it's not something that children would be interested in whatsoever the fact of somebody suggesting to her i don't think that's a good move threatens her control and her narcissism on her behalf basically says swap that away knock that back she might do it politely. Thanks for the suggestion, but I think we'll run with what I'd like to do here. I really do think the children will connect with this particular book. In other instances, she could lash out in a more uh, malign fashion. Shut up. I know what I'm talking about. You're the hireling. Your suggestion last time didn't work. Why should I listen to you again? And of course, the previous suggestion wasn't a problem. But her narcissism revises history to make her believe that it was to cause her to assert control over that particular aide or advisor by putting them down and rejecting what they have to say. So each time, her narcissism, in order to make her get the prime aims, shields her from the hypocrisies, the provocation, 
the fact that she's doing something horrible without justification. It tells her that not talking to Prince Harry is justified because he's been getting on her nerves. It tells her that it is entirely appropriate to turn up wearing all of those all of the expensive clothing and jewellery because she has to look good. And, of course, it reminds her of the fact that she's doing so in order to curry favour with the relevant fashion houses and that money can be made from that by causing people to then go and buy the clothing that she wears because, of course, there still remains a rump of demented and deluded sugars that still want to dress like Harry's wife. I want to be like Harry's wife. The narcissism, as it does with any unaware narcissist, has to make up for the gap between the lack of ability of the narcissist and what needs to be achieved, and therefore blinds them. So a simple example is of somebody who can't hold a note, but their narcissism deludes them that they have got the vocal range of Whitney Houston, and they then go on uh, The X Factor or Britain's Got Absolutely Fuck All Talent, certainly on this show anyway, and they make an idiot of themselves. And they react in a huffy manner and storm off. Oh, it's all jolly good entertainment. Ha, ha, ha. Bread and circuses. Everybody laughs at that goon. What they don't realise is that may well have been an upper lesser type A narcissist who's full of themselves, thinks that they can sing, and they can't. And then when they're laughed off the stage, that is a threat to their control, and their narcissism causes them to storm off in a huff in order to assert control by withdrawal, which is all great entertainment, and Simon Cowell gets even richer, and so forth. But people don't realise that that deluded individual is deluded by virtue of their narcissism. If the narcissism actually allowed them to see that they can't sing, they then wouldn't present themselves for the show. Therefore, they wouldn't assert control over a range of appliances, wouldn't receive the fuel, and potential other residual benefits. So the narcissism blinds lesser and mid-range narcissists to their shortcomings. It's part of the inherent design of the narcissism, if you will. You, not being affected by narcissism, don't have that blindness or delusion. So for you, you make the mistake of thinking that the narcissist looks at the world in the way that you do, and that you think to yourself, gosh, I'd never go on the stage, I know I can't sing, so I'd never make an idiot of myself in that way, or I would never be so crass as to turn up at a deprived neighbourhood in Harlem wearing all of that expensive clothing and jewellery, or I would never patronise the sex workers by telling them they're, that they're loved by writing on the bananas of empowerment with a sharpie. I just wouldn't do it. How can she not see it? She can't see it because the lens through which she sees the world is her narcissism. And the way that it functions is that it basically doesn't allow her to pick up on these things, to see these things, to notice these things. Or even if they are picked up on, they're dismissed so that she can ruthlessly and relentlessly pursue fuel, control, character traits, and residual benefits. You find this staggering. You'll have come across these people and think, they're so obtuse. They like such awareness. They really are that blinkered, narrow-minded. But it's the narcissism that's driving them to be that way. And of course, you invariably fall into the trap of trying to make the narcissist see. Driven by the corruption of your own truth-seeker trait, by your emotional thinking, you try and persuade the narcissist that, look, you actually can't sing. Or, I don't think it's a good idea that you do this because that's going to make you look like a hypocrite. The narcissist doesn't go, hmm, thanks. Thanks for pointing that out, actually. You're right. Instead, all they hear is, you're threatening my sense of control. And the narcissist responds by dismissing what you have to say, saying that you're a hater, that you're not supportive, that you don't know anything about this anyway, you're just envious of the fact that I can sing and you wish you were going on the show, and there's the blame shifting and the projection and the provocation and all the other manipulations that can get wheeled out in order to assert control over you. Harry's wife can't see these things. Her narcissism as part of its inherent design blinds her to it to enable her to keep on pursuing those prime aims and there will never be a moment of breakthrough there will never be a road to damascus moment where she will suddenly be enlightened and go oh my goodness me i am a total hypocrite yes there might be occasions of false recognition where the narcissism allows the narcissist to appear 
as if they recognise, for instance, fleeting promised change, or I realise that all the things I've done in the past have been terrible, I won't do it again. But they're just words, and you'll have seen the behaviours repeated, because at the end of the day, the narcissist will not alter. The narcissist cannot alter. And despite those that suggest that a narcissist can change, they don't know what they're talking about. Lesser and mid-range narcissists won't change because the narcissism doesn't allow them to see that there's anything to change. And with the greater and the ultra, we recognise that you believe that we ought to change, but we are so effective in what we do, we again see that there is no need to make alteration. You think we should change. We don't need to. With Harry's wife, why is she so blind to her behaviours? Because her narcissism makes it so to enable her to be as effective as possible for the pursuit of the prime aims. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.